and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Shireen Bhan and today we're going to talk about one of India's high growth sectors, the civil aviation sector. In fact, this was one of the issues that was brought up even in conversations between Prime Minister Modi and President Trump when they met in Washington DC for the very first time. To talk about their annual market outlook, joining us today is Dinesh Keskar, the Vice President Asia Pacific and India Sales for Boeing. Boeing continues to be very optimistic about India. In fact, projecting about 2,100 new planes for India over the next 20 years, amounting to about $290 billion. Let's go across to Dinesh Keskar. Mr. Keskar, always a pleasure to have you on the show. So that's your market outlook, 2,100 new planes for India over 20 years. What gives you uh, this reason to be optimistic? Okay, so Shireen, thank you. It is 2,100 airplanes worth 290 billion. And it is simply, by the way, it, India is now the highest growth market in the world and not one of the highest. And we are seeing double digit growth here consistently for the entire year last year. We came very close to 100 million passengers in 2016. And I'm confident that we're going to close to, uh, get close to 120 million passengers flying this year. So one is the actual evidence of what is happening. Second, it is based on the order book and the numbers of aircraft that are destined to come here. And our belief in the future growth of India with all the policies that are being enacted by the government of India, we see consistently increased GDP growth. And we also see infrastructure buildup that is happening at a reasonable pace. And all these things, including disposable income, a oil price that is in a narrow band, the exchange rate which is becoming favorable to India or for the rupee, all of these things are really helping us to come up with this bullish forecast. We are again pleased to see this market continues to get better and better. It is certainly in the top five now and uh, 2,100 airplanes in the next 20 years worth 290 billion. Quite excited to announce that today. Well, uh, 2,100 planes over the next 20 years, 290 billion. And I was just looking at your global uh, demand numbers. So, so you're projecting 41,030. That's the worldwide demand by 2000 and, uh, over the next 20 years. And India accounts for about 5.1% of the total global demand. Uh, you know, it's always uh, this India-China comparison that's made. And China, of course, has been uh, well ahead of India when it comes to commercial aviation. But do you see that gap narrowing significantly? Now? Well, it has already narrowed significantly, but you have to understand the landmass of China and the time zone difference within China is significantly bigger. So China de generates a lot of what is called revenue passenger kilometers, whereas India, when you fly about two and a half hours north-south or about same two and a half hours east-west, we are pretty much done with the domestic market. Whereas in China, you have large landmass. Population is slightly more than India. Of course, we are getting close to that also. But I think the gap will never be closed, but it's going to get closer, like you mentioned, simply because we will have more and more people travel. We will generate more SKs. But because our distances are small and our top markets like the metro cities, all of them are about two hours. And this is why we cannot do that. Uh, the same number of what is called revenue passenger kilometers that China can do. But I think we are really putting on a great show in the world. Uh, India's GDP, of course, is helping that. But more importantly, the fact that new airplanes are coming into the country, uh, airlines are placing orders, the profitability is in the place, and I'm sure we'll talk more about that. Those are the things that are helping us to grow faster. And I will tell you, if we had talked a decade ago, our market in India would not have been even 2% of the world. And now you just said correctly, it is over 5%, which is also very important to note here. You know, let me also ask you, since you're talking about new orders and new planes coming into India, on the sidelines of the Paris Air Show, Boeing signed an agreement with SpiceJet for an additional 20 aircraft uh, for the 737 MAX. In fact, as I pointed out, that this was something that was Correct. spoken of by both Prime Minister Modi and President Trump uh, in their joint statement as well. Uh, so give me a sense of when we can right. start to see the deliveries being made to SpiceJet and what house 
deep and significant is this relationship with SpiceJet for Boeing going forward? So look, every relationship in any place in the world is important with airlines. Every customer is important, but SpiceJet has taken, now that they have recovered significantly, have taken a firm decision to grow fast and catch up with the market share. So they had already announced, as you know, in January, 100 airplanes. And now with these airplanes, they're adding 20 more, and they have a previous order also. All of them is going to get them pretty close to their goal. And these 20 airplanes that were announced in uh, Paris were really part of the launch group, which allowed us to go ahead and put another airplane in the market called the 737-10, which will take head on our competition A321. And this airplane will have 5% better operating trip cost or operating cost per seat. And that is why we launched the program. And I'm glad to see SpiceJet is taken uh, sort of liking for that airplane. And this airplane is going to be great for metro cities where, as you very well know, the slots are constrained. You just cannot get any new slots into Mumbai and Delhi. And it's going to be a similar situation in the future. And having now those extra seats compared to 737-8 max, the 10 max will have anywhere between 25 to 35 extra seats. So you can carry the same crew, the same cockpit crew, same uh, sort of cabin crew, but you can carry 25 more passengers on every flight, which will help you increase your market share revenue and, of course, the profitability. So we are quite pleased to see that SpiceJet mm. is showcasing India in the world. Uh, they are important, so is Jet Airways. And, of course, Air India has been our big and great customers for a long time. And they are the flagship for all our white bodies in India. In fact, we just delivered 10 days ago a 787-8 Dreamliner to them. We'll deliver two more in August. And so we feel pretty good about what is happening in terms of orders and deliveries in India. And more importantly, they are mm. utilizing it properly. Like, for example, the white bodies are being used more than 12 hours a day, which is what leads to the profitability. Uh, you know, since you were talking about Air India, uh, Mr. Keska, let me ask you about what you make about the proposed privatization of Air India. Do you see this as an opportunity for Boeing going forward? Well, we obviously see opportunity to, uh, you know, Boeing for Boeing in Air India simply because they have been our customers for a long time. You know, the Air India and the jet age in India started on the wings of Boeing. Today, they fly 787s. They have 747s from the old order. They also uh, fly the 777, 300ERs. They fly nonstop to US. And with a base, eventually, of over 45 white bodies, I think clearly they will continue to grow with the type that we have. And I think that is why we see an opportunity. I think I, we see privatization as a way to bolster India, Air India even stronger make it more viable, and take this situation. We have seen similar mm. things in the past at uh, British Airways, which has now become a very vibrant airline. And we hope that with the right kind of privatization and the right ownership with the new buyer, Air India can thrive. And I personally think it's a gold mine. I mean, we have a country of over 1.1 billion people. And we have need for air travel. And Air India has already properties around the world, routes, slots, gates. All of those are very important assets. And then, as you know, the Air India Express, which is a low-cost low cost carrier they started for regional, that has been doing extremely well. And I think that's yeah. profitable. So these are some good pieces or the jewels of Maharaja. Air India Express is good. The MRO that we built for Air India engineering company is going to be good. The international routes is going to be good. And they'll have to improve some in the domestic market. And that's why we think Air India privatization is going to be positive for a lot of stakeholders, including the government of India. 
Okay, so you believe that the privatization of Air India will be good for all stakeholders. But, you know, another interesting aspect to this is who finally gets Air India. Uh, the only party that's uh, come uh, to the table publicly and said that they have expressed an interest in picking up Air India's international operations as well as Air India Express is Indigo. And Indigo is not a client of yours. So was that, would that concern you, Mr. Keska? Well, look, uh, obviously, I'm not going to comment here on who is the right buyer. It's the government of India to decide. But we have such a huge installed base in Air India that to undo that is going to be a big challenge. And another thing I would say is, while that is the only suitor that has publicly talked about, there has been discussions in the press I'm reading, and I'll be meeting some government of India officials later today, we will watch very carefully. Of course, this is not a process that's going to happen in two months or three months. It's going to take a number of months. And I think we will watch it very carefully. And that is why when I spoke earlier, I used the word right buyer. So the right buyer must have incentive to make this airline a great airline. And obviously, nobody is going to put millions of dollars in the kitty unless they want to make a lot of money with Air India. So we think having a fleet type that is common with engineers no, that absolutely. are trained, the pilots that are trained, these are massive, expensive things to do. And mm -hmm. that is why we think we will continue to do well no matter who buys Air India going forward. Mm -hmm.